So this is what 25 or 26 year old outer door seals look like. They're starting to tear, they're flattened out, they're pulling away from the pinch weld. It'll give us a good opportunity to pull this trim back and make sure there's no rust under here. The seals up by the door hinges are flattened out as well, as well as the seals going up the door jam here. We're gonna pull these out, put new ones in. Let's get started. Welcome back to Broncos and Parts Garage. My name is Chris. If you're new to the channel, please stick around to the end. You'll see additional links for content we've already created and uploaded. For those of you that have been here before, thank you for your continued loyalty. As you all know, I sell uh, Ford Bronco and OBS Ford parts. You can find my contact information in the video description. As you saw in the snippet earlier, we will be replacing the door seals. I got these from Jeff's Bronco Graveyard. Great customer service, great price, and I know they fit. I've used them before on some of my other OBS trucks. Let's get back to the video. The first thing you're going to do is remove your threshold plastic right here. My screws are in decent shape. There's four of them. I can use a number two Phillips to remove them. If yours are in bad shape, look in the video description. I'll put a link uh, for a screw extraction kit. They're pretty inexpensive on Amazon. So let me get started taking these four out. I'm probably going to go ahead and order a new carpet kit because this carpet's pretty faded. This was a truck that was up in North Branch, Michigan's whole life. I've got about 20 years of maintenance records, uh, handwritten. Uh, so it was well taken care of, but I've got a new motor being built for it over the winter. And we're putting a five and a half inch uh, Superflex lift kit on this winter as well, that I'm gonna have it repainted. So a lot of, a lot of things going down the pipeline for this truck. Get this off, pop this back. That's not in too bad a shape. We'll clean that up, recoat it. You can buy these at LMC or Jess Bronco Graveyard. Uh, not too expensive, and they do dress up the truck pretty nice when they're cleaned up. I don't see any rust in here. I do see some moisture or some oil, but the previous owner had sprayed oil all over the underside and parts of this truck nonstop. Uh, but this is a little damp. But uh, yeah, this rocker is in pretty decent shape. The next step will be loosening up the header trim here. We need to loosen this up to get our A-pillar trim out. I'm only going to take out three of the screws. This will sag down a bit and it'll allow this to come out. Keep these screws separate because they are longer than the two A-pillar trim screws. You don't want to take a long screw and drive it through here and pierce some sheet metal. So we'll zing these out right now. All right, the next step will be taking two screws out of the top of the A-pillar trim. The previous owner covered these with some sort of butyl rubber to keep it from rusting and probably to keep it from vibrating. So he did a good job taking care of this truck. Same with this screw, there's some butyl on it. That seals it up, keeps the uh, actual bare metal from rusting when you take the screws out. Now let's get that third one out. And this is the third screw in your A-pillar. And again, this one's longer than the other two, so set this aside. Now you'll just simply remove your A-pillar trim, slide it out, be careful, it's brittle plastic. You wanna make sure you don't break this tab, check it for cracks. Some of these mounting bosses have felt on them, it's a good time to replace that. If you don't have it, it keeps it from vibrating and squeaking. This one's in really good shape and we'll set this aside. The next step in accessing the door seal trim will be taking off your driver's side kick panel. Use a pry tool and I'll put a link in the description below for one of these and you'll pull out this push pin. Be careful, you don't want to break these. These also make great uh, push pins for your rear topper trim, and I do sell these, even smaller ones. We'll set this aside, and then we're gonna pull this trim out right now. You'll want to lift this up slightly and then pull it back out to release it from the pins inside. Now, if you look, the pins stayed inside the truck. I like to have the pins inside the actual part before we put it back on, but we'll address that when we replace this piece. But right now, this seal is exposed, and you can tell this is all flattened out and almost touching the hinge. The next step will be removing your seat belt retractor cover behind your driver's seat. There's two Phillips screws. There's one in the front and one on the top. Let's get those out now. 
And again, keep track of these screws because these are a little bit different than your other uh, rear panel screws. And then we'll remove the retractor cover and set that aside. Now, this is kind of funny because these are usually soaked with salt water or rotted out. I'm gonna remove this. This is Ford's insulation. But if you wanna zoom in with the camera, you can see that this, this truck actually, uh, you can't see the cement. 99.9% .9 of the trucks I bring in, this is completely rotted out. So I'm really happy to see that this is in shape. I'll probably clean this up after this video is done and apply a bunch of rubberized undercoating under here, just in case I have passengers that with salty shoes, because we're in Michigan, I don't want this to rot out. The next step will be loosening up your rear panel. There's a screw here, and there's a screw down here by the seatbelt retractor. On the bottom of the panel, we're gonna remove these two screws so we can pop this plastic off the welt of our seal. Set these screws aside. Next, we're gonna remove your B-pillar trim. Actually, we're not gonna remove it, we're just gonna loosen up this screw. This will allow us to push this trim off of the welt of the seal. This screw is a little bit smaller, so we're gonna set this aside so we don't mix it up with the other screws. You can see, a little bit smaller. So next, we're gonna take your thumb and gently push back this trim, exposing this welt right here. And we're gonna push back our B-pillar trim again and we'll be able to flex this back enough. I'm, I'm gonna have a helper help me when I put the seal in. You don't have to take off this uh, seat belt, shoulder bolt. We're not gonna use a T50 to pull that out. We're just gonna push this back. So let's get this seal off. Finally, we get to remove the seal. We're gonna start at the bottom and pull it off the rocker welt. So it's just a matter of pulling it. Pulling it off the pinch. Now, again, I'm gonna push back on that B-pillar trim. We didn't take the seatbelt bolt out, but you can if you need to. This is hard to pull down because on the 96s, they used a butyl material to help hold the headliners up, and it does stick over the years to the, your, your trim. So you can see this sticky goo right here. I don't know if you can get that in camera. That's holding the headliner up. So you back that out, and we'll just keep pulling down. Push back on the rear panel trim, and we're all set. We're gonna set this aside here. Now, again, this is wet, so I know this has been leaking. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna clean this out with a rag. Uh, normally I'd put some undercoating on it. You can see some rust starting here from the screws that held down our threshold. So I'm not gonna do that now, but if I wasn't filming this video, I would sand this down. I would primer it or put some uh, rust converter on it. And then I'd make sure that I put the butyl in these holes before I put the screws back down to seal that all up. Okay, upon further inspection, I've noticed that that, that is not water. Now, my, my seals were bad, but that's this is oil. Um, it's an oil residue, and when I got it, as I said earlier, I had about three pages of handwritten notes where the owner did all the maintenance, everything he did, oil changes, car washes, spark plugs, water pump, differential changes, everything. He also had a list of every time he sprayed an oily goo underneath the truck. I don't know if it was used motor oil, uh, di used diesel motor oil, but I'm guessing that at one point he took this back and he must have put that oil in here and that's why none of this is rotted out. Now, there is a little bit of rust on this pinch well. That's something I'm gonna fix real quick before I go get any further, but you guys uh, obviously won't be around when I fix it. It'll just be repaired by the time we put the seal back on. So let me get to this and I'll be back in one second. We quickly sanded it down, put some Rust-Oleum rust converter on it, then painted it black. I'll probably paint it green when I paint the truck, but this should keep the rust from spreading. So we're gonna start putting the seal in place. I've got a dead blow hammer to help tap it into some of the corners, especially at the top where it's more of a right angle. Um, you don't wanna pull this on and off too many times because you don't wanna wear out the, the wire or the metal that's in here that clamps down to the pinch weld. So, but if you have to, you can do it more than once. So we'll start, and you don't wanna really pound on this because you don't wanna cut your seal. But so we're just gonna slowly start working it back in here. And you kinda of wanna push forward because this seal is going to shrink a little bit. And we'll get this up here, tap this down a little bit. Seat those corners and then 
as you push this up, you'll be pushing back your, <clears throat> your B-pillar trim. And again, kind of push down on the trim. Get up here. Kind of push down as you roll it over that pinch welt. Push it behind your B-pillar trim. Again, you could always take the seatbelt bolt out, but I don't think it's necessary. Take your time getting it up around this corner because there is metal inside this rubber that pinches on here so this corner is going to fight you get this here tap that in a little bit and then continue on Again, I'm going to tap a little bit, make sure it's all seated. And again, I'm going to make sure this is seated nice and tight in this corner. All right. Again, I'm still pushing back as I'm applying it, so I'm not stretching it out. Get this in here. Tap that in a little bit. Now you might be thinking I'm making it look harder than it is. You just want to make sure that you're not stretching this. So you want to make sure that's seated. And you want to make sure that you're, again, you're not pulling it and you're not stretching it. I can't emphasize that enough. And now we do have some overlap. So I'm gonna get a cutter and I'm gonna show you guys how to cut that and then seam these two together with this center tubing. So what I've done is peeled back the starting point a little bit and then installed the tail end of the seal completely. This has this rubber connecting tube. It goes back about eight inches. So we didn't wanna cut that. We wanna cut the side without the tube in it. So what I've done is measured so there's about an eighth of an inch overlap onto this piece. That will allow for this to, uh, if it shrinks up any, it'll compensate for that. So we're gonna cut it just a smidge longer than it should be. And then if we have to, we'll just stretch it back into place. Again, it is rubber, it is gonna shrink. That's what this is for, to take up any gap when that happens. So I'm gonna use this reciprocating tool and I'm just gonna snip off the end right here without cutting my finger off. Set this aside. We've got our seal cut. The next thing we want to do is put the connector tube inside the outer seal. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of silicone spray right here to ease sliding this in. Oop, I'm getting all my carpet. Now I'm going to shoot some down inside here just to just to make it easier to slide that this this tube in. So we'll pull that up a little bit, and this should just slide right in real easy, just like that. I may even have to pull some of this off to get it, but. Slide that in. 
Now we'll get these back on the pinch well right here. And I'll give them a quick tap. And that's what it looks like when your seal's back in place. Now we're gonna get this put back together. All right, thanks for sticking around this long in the video. I'm gonna get ready and start putting this all back together. For any of the tools you've seen me use, you'll find links in the video description. And please remember to like, subscribe, and comment in the comment section if you like what I did or you see any changes I should make in this process. To start with, I'm not gonna put this fiberglass batting back into this pocket. I don't want it to collect water and rot out this uh, seatbelt retractor cavity, I guess you could call it. This one's solid. It's very rare that I see these without uh, holes or uh, heavy oxidation there. So we'll toss this aside. Next thing we're gonna do is push the rear panel and the B pillar panel back over that seal and kind of lock everything in place. So we're gonna get that in here. And remember that small screw is the one that went up on top through your B pillar. You don't want to over tighten these too much. You don't want anything cracking. So the next thing we're going to do <clears throat> is put our other screws back in our <clears throat> rear panel trim. Next, we're going to put our kick panel trim in. Again, it's easier when you pull these Christmas tree plugs out, slide them back on the plastic. You're going to line up this one with the top hole, this one with the bottom hole down here. You want to make sure that you bed this thing right over the edge of the welt of your new seal and then put your other plug back in to hold it in place. Press that in and you've got that secure. All right, let's install our A-pillar trim. This is a little bit more tricky. So you'll put the base of it in first, then start lining the holes up and make sure that the uh, your A-pillar trim goes over your B-pillar trim. And you can line up the holes, start getting everything in place. I'm gonna put this top one in here loosely I'm not gonna tighten this down. Just gonna hold it in place for me. Again, you don't go crazy on these. You don't wanna start cracking this plastic. Now, remember, you need the longer screw for the A-pillar trim. You can stay there if you want to. <clears throat> there we go. And Put that in snug, but don't go too tight. You don't want to crack it. So kind of higher to find sometimes. And then this one goes up right here and locks your A-pillar back into place. Next, we're going to put the header trim back in. Goes on the outside of your A-pillar. Uh, I can line this hole up now. little finagling you'll get it in there yeah looks like I pinched one of my wires so I'm gonna back that out real quick and tuck in my lip visor harness there we go and we'll put this one in as well at this time and still my harness sticking out a little bit but I'll leave that alone for right now tighten this up The next step, we'll be putting on our threshold protector. Let's get to that now. The last step will be reinstalling your door threshold plastic. Um, I cleaned this one up a little bit. It's got some scuffs on it. I put some black shine on it. It's not as nice as I normally would make it, but it'll do for right now. And it'll look nicer against the new seal. 
What I'm kind of embarrassed about is that I did not have my sandblaster up and running, so I've got some rusty, crusty screws. Normally I would tumble these or sandblast them and then either repaint them or nitride coat them. Um, I'm not a big fan of putting the stainless steel shiny screws in here. I still like the black colored screw. So we'll replace these at a later date when I replace the carpet, which I've ordered. So we're gonna take our time putting these in. Again, because they're kind of blind holes. We'll screw them in partially, not all the way, just to make sure that we can get all the other holes lined up. I got two in. And we'll loosely put in this rear one. I've got them all started, so now it's just a matter of tightening them up. You might even want to do these by hand because you don't want to strip out these holes, which I have not done. That concludes our door seal video. Remember, this is what we started with, this seal that was pulled apart. It was rusting, it was torn and flattened out, and we ended up with a nice new seal. I cleaned up the threshold a little bit. Again, I got to replace these screws, and I'm going to be doing another carpet video. If you like what you've seen, please leave a comment below. If you didn't like what you see, go ahead and leave a comment too. I'm always willing to learn new stuff. Please like, subscribe. And one last tip, if you're having trouble closing your door, it's because you have a new seal. You may need to adjust your door striker, and we'll do that in another video. We'll see you soon.